What's up everybody, it's the one, the only, the Phenome, and welcome to part 15 of my Mass Effect playthrough video series. Now, in the previous video we finally managed to finish the uh, uh, the final, uh, final one of the initial three story missions that were given to us on the Citadel. We finished Novaria, and uh, in a nutshell, we managed to uh, help out a couple of people on this on the station uh, in the station I guess that's not the space station or whatever uh, at Rift Station we helped out a certain Dr. Cohen who um, due to the attack of the Rachni uh, basically his in his lab there was a certain toxin escaped and infected several of his co-workers we helped him get the cure even though we were ambushed by one of uh, one of Benezia's servants we still managed to get out there, give him the cure, and basically that was good. We also helped the captain of the of what's left of the Alanis Risk Control Services group, who were protecting the scientists, or what's left of them, I guess. We helped them fend off Arachni attack, so that was all good. And in the end, we managed to track down the matriarch herself, and in a battle against her and a whole bunch of Asari commandos and Geth, Geth troopers, uh, in the end, we managed to down her, but in a remarkable feat of strength, she actually gave Shepard some information that is critical to his mission. And uh, basically, she informed Shepard that uh, Saren had been looking for a certain relay, I guess, which will in turn help him find the conduit, whatever that was. And uh, yeah, she gave us that info, but she. She was indoctrinated and she could only fight against it for so long, so in the end we had to kill her. But in the end, there was the question of the Rachni Queen, from whom the whole of the Rachni had spawned, what to do with her. She actually communicated to Shepard through a corpse, which was pretty weird. And uh, she basically, she told she told about the Rachni to, uh, to Shepard and in the end, well, we decided to let her go. Because she was not hostile towards us. She just wanted to go away and raise her uh, children in safety, so we let her go. I mean, how bad can it be? How bad can she get? I mean, we'll see. We'll see about that. That's not the last time we'll see the Rachni Queen in this uh, in this series. So yeah, that's everything in a nutshell. So let's click resume, and I didn't leave the station because as soon as we leave the station, it cuts to the next basically to the next uh, story bit and I didn't want to do that at the end of all the, uh, what was already a pretty long video so here we go back to central station and if I remember correctly we're gonna actually go straight back to the uh, to the Normandy and uh, recap the mission there um, hello okay here we go Yep, I was... I was right. What's our next move, Commander? Head for the Mew Relay? Not so fast. The Mew Relay could link to dozens of systems. Unless we know exactly where Saren's going, we'd just be wasting our time. The Commander is right. We cannot rush off blind. We still need to learn more about Saren. Who put you in charge? Did the Commander resign when I wasn't looking? We're all on the same team here, Williams. She's just trying to help. Sorry, Commander. This is a tough mission. We're all on edge. Everyone go get some rest. Crew, dismissed. Ovaria report is away, Commander. You want me to patch it through to the Council? It's fine. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Is this report accurate, Commander? You found Rachni on Novaria? And then released the Queen. Do you have any idea what you've done? How many generations until they overrun the galaxy? <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> this Queen is different. She understands why her kind had to be wiped out last time around. I hope you're right, Shepard. Our children's children will pay the price if you're not. We'll be waiting for your next report, Commander. Miss Williams, Commander, we need to talk. If we do not resolve oh, this situation shit. now, I am afraid things might become... awkward. Oh, awkward, huh? I hope we can keep this civilized. I do not want things to become unpleasant. Because it's been so pleasant between us lately. Look, somebody in this room needs to make a choice. It ain't me, and it ain't you. Alright, 
Let's talk. Maybe we should try to work this out. I think we must. I may not know much about human relationships, but I understand the concept of jealousy. Jealous? Of you? You're not even our species. Perhaps that is why you feel threatened. I am a rival unlike any you have faced before. Hostility is a common reaction to the unfamiliar. Doctor, you keep smartassing me, I'll show you what my hostile reaction is like. Cat fight? <laughs> oh man. I honestly think if I would pick the cat fight option, it would act they would actually both kick my ass <laughs> in the end. Alright. Tits down, ladies. Both of you, settle down. We can handle this like mature adults. This is stupid. We're not married, Shepard. You want to get involved with some alien? Go ahead. It's none of my business. Alright. Lair, bitch. I never meant for you to get hurt. But Liara's the one I really care about. Hey, we're all grown-ups here, right? Hope you two will be happy together. Don't mind. I need to clean my gear. <laughs> get shrekt. I feel bad for her, Shepard. I hope she'll be okay. No worry. I'll go talk with her in a while. Give her a chance to cool down. I suppose you're right. I'm sorry you were put in this position, but... I'm glad you chose me. I don't believe we should continue this discussion here in the comm room, Shepard. You know where to find me if you want to have a more... private conversation. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, thank you. So that's actually that gave me a paragon point, or maybe that was from the conversation with the council. In any case, now that we're done with that, I would like to say that now we have reached a sort of a middle point in um, in the game, at least in my opinion. We finished up, we did Eden Prime, we did the Citadel where we scouted the talent and acquired Rex, Tali, and Garrus for our team, and after that. We did the three main story missions that we were, that were given to us. We did the mission at the Artemis Tau Cluster, where we acquired Liara to round out our crew. We did Pharos, where we uh, where we found out about uh, the Prothean Cipher and where we acquired it. And also, we uh, we went to Novaria and we managed to get rid of uh, Meshach Benezia, one of the most important lieutenants on Saren's squad. So now we'll, we will pass sort of into the second part of the game. And, uh, well, we already know about the mission to Vermeer. And uh, there's basically, there is more, obviously. And uh, I won't talk about that now. I'll let you guys find out as it comes. But this is the point in the playthrough where after I sort out all the gear, I will actually, we will actually start doing side missions. And we'll do them all in sort of one single swoop. I'll including the DLC, the two DLC missions, uh, which were um, Pinnacle Station and uh, and uh, something about skies or whatever on the asteroid X57, if I remember correctly. So that's all to come. Now, let's see. I had Liara and Garrus with me, so I'll have a look at my shotgunners. First things first, Rex. You need a badass shotgun. I don't know which one is the most badass. Ah, here we go. Tornado 5 is a contender. All ups from that. Yep. Uh, Tornado 5 it is. So, Tornado 5 shotgun for Rex. And I'll give you a close range. I would say... Yeah, actually... Come to think of it... I'll go for... Um, yeah, polonium rounds. Or rather, no. No, no, no. Oh, but we don't have any more... Yeah, we don't have any more... Um, hammerhead rounds. So, in terms of the assault rifle, we have two Tsunami 6 assault rifles. So one will go to Gar uh, to Rex and the other one will go to Ashley. Only let's give you a bit better tungsten rounds. Recoil damper. Two. Oh my god, look at all these terrible, terrible uh, combat scanners. My god. 
Alright. Medium armor for Krogan. There's actually better, the Explorer 5 armor. Oh <laughs> Oh wow, he looks like a huge tur huge blue and white turd. Uh sorry Rex. Um alright, he has energized weave level five, so that's a respect. Ablative coating isn't really needed. So we're gonna have to leave him with that. I'll just gel this. So Ashley. Your main weapon is the assault rifle, so let's give you an improved tsunami weapon. And let's give you tungsten rounds along with well rail extension is gonna work anyway, so that's a thing. So the Naginata six sniper rifle, actually, what do I have? I already have the Naginata six. So this Garrus, if if I'm right. No, he actually had the five model. Let's give him the six. Ashley rarely uses her. I actually rarely ask Ashley to use the sniper rifle. So we'll just leave it at that. AP rounds three. Yeah. Let's leave it at that at the moment. And she has Kineta Stabilizer 4 for the weapon, so that's good. Heavy armor. Looking pretty good with that. The assassin armor has better damage protection, but way lower shields. The rest is medium and light. Yeah, that Titan 5 medium armor, though. It's pretty good. But I'll go in the end with... with the Guardian 5. Ooh, nice! Nice black armor. Alright, Exoskeleton 5. Yeah, I guess I can go with that. So that's good. So that's Ashley, Garrus, Rex, and Liara sorted. Now Tali. Lovely Tali. We can give her... No, this, I'll leave the Stiletto 6 pistol to the... Um, to Caden. He said I'll give her the Stinger 6. She has incendiary rounds at level 4, so let's give her Polonium rounds because they're awesome. She has high caliber barrel. Oh my god, that is terrible. I'll give her recoil damper. I mean, it's only level 2, but Jesus Christ, it's still better. And in terms of a better shotgun, she already has the Tornado 4. And everything else is not as good. Any Quarian armor? No, but she does have the Explorer 7 armor, and she can get... She has Medical inf Interface 4, so she can get another bonus. Yeah, I guess we can give her Ablative Coating. Um, Alright, and finally Caden. Caden friggin' Elenko. So, yeah, we're gonna give you the Stiletto 6 pistol. AP rounds 2. No tungsten rounds. Okay, I'll give you tungsten rounds four. High caliber barrel level three. Honestly, I, I'd rather go with a recoil damper. And finally, light human armor. Yeah, gladiator four or the liberator five. I'll go with the liberator. <laughs> now you look like a like a big white and yellow turd. Ah boy, poor guys. All right, I can. Sell the rest, and believe me, there will be tons Looking of. for supplies? Yeah, yeah. Um, there will be tons of gear coming through from the special. Well, not special from the side missions. So I can sell all this stuff. Quite. Uh, I'm quite confident I can sell all this stuff. So, in this video, we'll actually we'll talk a bit more with our, with our crewmates. Uh, we'll talk to Liara, talk to her about the whole Sari culture, and, um, and then we'll quickly pop over to the Citadel to, um, to find out what's, uh, what's, what's new there. There should be some interesting stuff. Alright, so now you can see we have 766,000 credits, which means... Which means we can buy the pistol. Hold on. Equalizer 8, uh, no, Equalizer 7 sniper rifle. Yeah, but that goes... That's That doesn't even compare to the uh, 
to the Spectre, Master Gear, Sniper Rifle. Look at those stats. Isn't she a beaut? So I'm getting that, and I'm getting the Spectre Master Gear Pistol. Now I could buy... I could buy these uh, super fancy ass weapons for all my uh, all my crewmates, but looking for supplies. Let oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, I could do that, but I won't in the interest of role playing because I'm the only Spectre around. So you know, sucks to be you guys. <laughs> yeah, that that is a bit childish, but hey ho. So, he already has the Naginata, and what about the Stinger 4 pistol? It's actually quite bad. What's compared to Liara's pistol is the same thing, and Caden's pistol is way more powerful. I think it does like 40 more damage, so... Looking for supplies? Yeah, 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 yeah. You bet, man. So, sell this and this. And we won't spend cash on other stuff for now. Let's just talk to the, to the crewmates. Commander, good to see you been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I'll bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless. Nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. <laughs> okay. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Right. You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for Full set. Well, wow. somebody's making a killing out there. <laughs> okay. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Interviewing? You mean threatened? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely near. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. That's sick. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. Clone their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave the inner. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see. Them. Bastard. <laughs> I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Aw, oh, man. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if he tried to stop it. 
But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway, and just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. Hmm. Nah, that's not right. Well, it's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a badge. Yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't make it any easier, but I see your point. I just wish I could have stopped him. Hmm. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion, be there when you find him. Alright, so that is a new assignment. Garrus, find Dr. Salion. So, yeah. We'll be able to do that mission for Garrus. Here's the big one. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Yes. Such as? Such as I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. Hmm. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. He was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met in the Hollows, in the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. Hmm. Okay. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? 
You trying to make me cry, Shepard? I've got some unfinished business with my family, but that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But, Commander, I want to be there when you find him. So long, Rex. Shepard. Alright, so that is the bonus mission for Rex, family armor. So we're gonna have to go and kick some uh, Turin scum ass and uh, recover Rex's, battle ar Rex's family battle armor. So that's a thing. Let's talk to you, Tali, real quick. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Oh. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Oh, that's terrible. Screw What's that. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands. I'm his only child. Whoa, princess. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed, and that reflects badly on both me and my father. The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian has ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out again. But even if we stop Saren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the Veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. What you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own independently but i don't want this to get in the way of our mission shepherd first we stop Saren, then i'll worry about my own problems so yeah we'll talk about uh, 
we we'll talk with Tali about their culture and uh, I the stuff uh, some other time. See you later. See you later, Tali. Yep. We'll just go and I guess uh, I didn't expect that these uh, talks will would take so much time. So, oh shit! Forgot to talk to Ashley. <laughs> time for an awkward conversation. So yeah, let's let's just quickly skip back and 180. Boom. Um, yeah. Let's go and talk to Ashley, although that's going to be an awkward conversation. Then we'll talk to Caden and finally to uh, to the lovely Liara. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't particularly like blowing off Ashley like that, but uh, yeah, to be honest, not a fan of her. Commander, what's your opinion on the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Skipper. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It, it was yours. You know, you really should talk to Tassoni about her mom. She has to be hurting. Just saying, Skipper. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? Sure, if you have time. Figured you'd be busy with tactical briefings and whatnot. Don't know what I think about us attacking today, of all days. It's kind of an ill omen. You mean on the anniversary of the first contact war? The end of it, yeah. My family always marks it. I'm the only Williams here. I guess you'd be the only other one interested in it. Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm General Williams' granddaughter, the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race. I see. That's why you drive yourself so hard. A Williams has to be better than the best, if only to avoid suspicion. That's what my dad told me the night before he retired. It takes a special kind of thick-headed to march into a job where your family's blacklisted. I did it anyway. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Granddad deserved better than that. He refused to sacrifice his men just to save face for humanity. You planning to throw yourself on a sword to save face for him? Would it make a difference? He's gone now. Dad's gone too. And who would it impress? I'll never be good enough for the Alliance. So now you know. You gonna kick me off the ship, Skipper? You kidding me? You're a valuable part of my crew, Williams. If I want an opinion from the head, I go to Alenko. When I want one from the heart, I go to you. I also play a mean game of pool. Good to know. <laughs> but anyway, I've got things to do before we land. I'm sure you do too. Dismiss, Chief. Sir. All right, not as awkward as I thought. I remember this conversation going differently, to be honest. So, um, yeah. Now we can go to Caden to get an opinion off the head. Maybe he'll tell us more about Jump Zero and uh, how he became a biotica and whatnot. All right, buddy, what you got? Thing you need, Commander. All right, tell me about the mission. What's your opinion on the last mission. Killing Saren's uh, that was Vanessa anyway. Second in command. Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Tassoni's heard of your own kid and how they killed her own mom. Any opinion on the Rachni? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the council. We weren't out here during the Rachni War. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. That's actually a pretty good point, but oh well. That's just too late for that. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I didn't figure you'd have time to talk with all that's going on. There's got to be some xenobiologists who want to read about the Thorium. Wait, we didn't talk about talk with this guy after Pharos? The paperwork will keep. Something on your mind? I'm just looking for a year. That a briefing wasn't the right place to say how ridiculous this is. Seems like every other race in the galaxy is wrapped up in their own problems. They don't want to see what's coming. Wanting to believe everything will be fine? Sounds like human nature to me. Yeah, I guess some things carry across species well enough. I should remember 
that remembers. Hmm. I think you'd carry a grudge over the crap you took from Burnus. Before I met Burnus, I knew as much as any other civilian. Aliens were weird, superior, and tried to tell us what to do. I mean, it's only been 26 years since first contact. That's not a lot of time to understand that. It was Vernus who made me see how human the aliens are. They're not different or special. They're jerks and saints, just like us. Hell, by the time I got payback, I didn't even want it anymore. I don't see you snapping very easily. What finally did it? He hurt Rana. Broke her arm. She reached for a glass of water instead of pulling it biotically. She just wanted a drink without getting a nosebleed. You know? Like an idiot, I stood up. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Just did something. And Vernus lost it. Beat the crap out of me. Kept shouting how they should have bombed us back to the Stone Age. And that's when the knife came up. A military issue talon. Right in my face. I cut loose. Full biotic kick right in the teeth. Almost as strong as I can manage now. At 17, I saw Badass. You wanted to help a girl you cared for. That's a noble thing. Maybe my intentions were noble, but I... I lost control. I killed him, Shepard. Snapped his neck. They probably could have saved him if they got him to an infirmary quick enough. But they didn't. Caused a stir when they shipped him home. Bot training was shut down. Canada exploded a couple of years later. So, yeah, maybe I hated that terrain. I mean, if one ass was enough to judge a whole race, I think humans do. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, the logic that you have to be, <laughs> you have to go by nowadays as well. A reasonable stance. Keep that level head, and we'll do fine. Staying reasonable is about all we've got left. Everyone else in this galaxy seems to have gone out of their minds. Present company accepted, of course. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, well, the guy wanted to protect the girl he liked, so you know, nothing bad about that. Pick up some stuff. Our medical. Let's go talk to Liara. Hello. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be, before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. The best of your mother lives on in you. Her determination, her intelligence, her strength. That is kind of you to say. I appreciate your concern, but I am fine. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with you until the end, Shepard. I like talking with you, Liara, no matter what the subject. You have been very understanding with me, Shepard. Very patient. I appreciate that. I know there are some strange beliefs about my people. I am familiar with the legend of Asari promiscuity, but those rumors have little basis in fact. When one of my people joins with an individual from another species, it is a very deep and spiritual exchange. We do not enter lightly into a union. Hmm. Interesting. Tell me more. You make it sound almost mystical. A true union goes far beyond an ordinary melding. It is a connection that transcends the physical universe. Two become one. Thoughts and senses merge. Identities intertwine. Memories and emotions weave themselves together, becoming entangled in a single, rapturous whole. It is unlike any other experience. In some cases, it can be a truly life-changing event. Sounds amazing. Are you saying... No. Oh, no. Uh, I am not very good at this, am I? I'm sorry, Shepard. I am trying to explain why I have been so... reserved. The Union is more than just sex. It is the lifeblood of my species. The way we Asari evolve and grow as a society. That is why I have never... Uh, I mean... That is why we must choose our partners with great care. Unbelievable. I want you to be absolutely sure about this, Liara. I am only 106, barely an adult by Asari standards, and 
I spend most of my time absorbed in my research. I never really thought about it. Not until I met you. You are very special to me, Shepard. But with all that's happened, Saren, the Geth, the Reapers, I do not know if we are ready for this. These are dark times, Liara. Maybe once all this is over. I'm glad you understand, Shepard. There is too much at stake. We need to put aside our personal feelings and focus on stopping Saren. I wish it did not have to be that way. But we all have to make sacrifices. Let's let's talk about something else. Alrighty. I should go. Bye, Shepard. So, let's head back let's head to the bridge. We'll uh, we'll have a quick word with Joker, hear, uh, hear his brief commentary about the mission on Avaria, and after that we'll um, head to the galaxy map and that's where we'll end the video. And in the next video we'll uh, we'll start skipping around across the galaxy. Oh wait, first we'll go to the Citadel, uh, do the stuff there, and then we'll skip through the galaxy and find those juicy side missions on which we'll get loads of experience, gear, and some interesting story tidbits. Why am I glad to be off of Novaria? I don't know which was worse, the cold or the corporations. One will freeze your balls off, the other will sell them out from under you. With all due respect, Commander. <laughs> okay. I have to go. I have to go, right, buddy. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Joker at least has some good punchlines. Um, right, so that pretty much is it for today, so yeah. Next video, we go to the Citadel, and then we start doing side missions, which is going to be awesome. Uh, but for now, that's going to be it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Then, If if you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you leave a like or a comment, that will be much appreciated. And also, don't forget that the channel has Twitter and Facebook pages. Check them out. The links for those can be found in the description of this video. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.